Hello everyone, Newsroom Weekly Review, your Middle East U.S. entertainment news. I'm Chella. I'm here every Friday. If you're new here, make sure you don't forget to subscribe, and if you're already a subscriber, welcome back. Let's get right into your weekly review news. According to Baghdad Obsleek, the Parliament Security and Defense Committee revealed today, September 24th, efforts to move the file of Iraqi fun frozen in France to buy weapons and military equipment. The head of the Parliament Security and Defense Committee, Mohammed al Haider, said in a statement that there are obstacles in arming the Iraqi army in terms of air power, air defense, and ground forces, including armored vehicles and tanks, especially after the battle of the terrorist organizations, including the French military, Attacha, and political representatives of the embassy. The French visited us in security and defense committees and briefed us on the initial understanding in contracting the French Rafale planes, as well as advanced French radars and various air defense weapons. He explains, the contracts have not been signed, but the understanding exists and has been identified, and the Iraqi defense minister visited France twice and agreed on some weapons. We do not know how much it is. Al Hatters indicated that the committee was formed during the era of the two previous governments to look into the files. And this committee is made up of old officers in the Air Force and Air Defense who have complete information. Iraq and the subject is being searched for. He stressed that Iraq can raise the issue and take weapons with the old frozen money because Iraq paid to France to buy the weapons, but it has been stopped during the siege and remains frozen in France, and some officers raise the issue as volunteers. And according to Baghdad Mwanzi News, Deputy Executive Director of the Association of Iraqi Private Banks, Al Hashemi called on the government to focus on the digital economy during the current period to make Iraq keep pace with the development taking place in the world. Al Hashemi said in a statement received by Mwanzi News that Iraq needs to give the private sector the appropriate environment to transition to digital transformation as the revelations in information and communication is currently similar to what the world witnessed in the industrial revolutions that occurred in 1760s. Noting that the next legislative needs to focus on supporting the digital economy through appropriate legislation. Al Hishmi praised the government's tendency to establish a youth support fund of 30 billion dinars, which support technical projects which contribute to the development of Iraqi's economy and makes younger people go towards pioneering projects, noting that the private banking sector has begun to publish electronic payment tools in all the country, and it requires store owners to use a post device to organize the buying and selling process and reduce theft, waste, and others. Next, we have today's economy news. Baghdad reports oil prices jumped to their highest level in more than two months to cross the barrier of $77 a barrel. Brent crude settled up at $1.06 or at 1.4% to $77.25 a barrel, the highest price since mid-July, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose 1.07 and 1.15% to $73.30 a barrel. And then Baghdad Mwanzi News reported Thursday, the Central Bank of Iraq announced a rise in the bank's foreign exchange reserves. The deputy governor of the Central Bank, Al Yassiri, said that the foreign reserves of the Central Bank of Iraq witnessed a 14% increase compared to what they were on December 31st, 2020. It was worth $54,501,000. It reached $62,155, an increase of $7,654. And the Prime Minister Mustafa al kazimi announced last April the central bank's foreign currency reserves has risen to more than $60 billion. al kazimi said in a statement received by Iraqi news agency, the INA, 
that the central bank foreign currency reserves rose to more than $60 billion after it was $51.9 billion before the start of the reform measures for this government. The Prime Minister added that the increase came as a result of reform measures taken by the government after many bets of their failure and lack of contingency, adding that we succeeded in stopping waste and great corruption in the notorious central bank auction. And we are proceeding with our procedures and we will not be stopped. Baghdad Obsolete's reported U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, Matthew Tweller, highlighted Thursday the project supported by the American Development Finance Corporation to improve access to finance in Iraq. During a welcome speech at the Iraq's Finance Fair, which was held on Wednesday, September 22nd, in a statement received by Al Musala, the U.S. ambassador said that the U.S. Agency for International Development has provided more than $8 million in loans since 2015 to help small and medium-sized enterprises recover from the war against ISIS. The ambassador noted that the U.S. government corporations with the Ministry of Finance in the new Financial Transparency Initiative to strengthen open budgets, procedures, and improve public assets to budget documents including state-owned companies. He pointed out the importance of the private sector, given that the three states own banks own about 85% of the total deposits. And in, he indicated that the United States is committed to supporting Iraq's effort to implement the white papers on economics, reforms, and built a vibrant and development economy that provides jobs opportunities in the private sector. Al Farad News reports the Electoral Commission's reiterated its confirmation of the announcement of the results of the polls in early elections scheduled for October 10th, within 24 hours. The Electoral Commission said in a press conference held yesterday morning that the election on October 10th, Iraqs will witness a news transformation and the results will be announced within 24 hours. And Thursday stimulated embodied the fact. It is also stated that the results last stimulated Wednesday arrived from all stations to the National Center in less than 90 minutes, stressing the importance of international monitoring role. The commission pointed out that the Kirkuk Elections Office is proceeding according to the plan prepared for it in advance and will never allow its effects the elections and the voters will be free to test. She added, strict measures will be taken against anyone who violates the electoral campaign regulations, noting that the election law did not indicate the percentage of participations. The promise the elections will be successful. The commissioner indicated that the distribution of 17 million biometric cards, which is solid. In Shafak news, the Iraqi president, Barham Shali, also confirmed on Wednesday he's ensuring the election scheduled for the 10th of next October and their integrity is their top priority, while noting that his country supports easing tensions in the regions as well as international coordination to confront climate change. This came during Saleh's meeting at the United Nations headquarters in New York with the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, according to a statement issued by the Presidency of the Republic of Iraq and received a copy of by Shafak News. According to the statement, the President Saleh congratulated Guterres on his re-elections of Secretary General of the organization and praised the great support provided by the United nations to Iraq in various fields and the support in electoral fields and facilitating the task of sending observers for the integrity and transparency of the election scheduled for October 10th. Salih noted the importance of the incoming elections for the people and need to provide the utmost integrity, justice, and transparency in its conduct, stressing the need to support efforts to consolidate the security and stability of the Iraq and its people and the importance of working to reduce tensions in the regions and to restore Iraq to its pivotal role in it. The Iraqi president stressed that the necessity of strengthening international solitary in facing the challenges of the era represented to combating violence and terrorism, as well as facing the climate change crisis and protecting the environment, which has become an intimate threat to all humanity.
He pointed out Iraq is looking forward to the international support and expertise in regards in order to support his national plan for environmenting, revitalizing Mesopotamia and its establishment concepts of the green economy for his part in Gorich praise the progress made by Iraq and its tireless efforts to ease regional tension, supporting that the United Nations organizations will continue to support Iraq and through its missions in the country and the United Nations to support the security, stability, and prosperity of the Iraqi people. Baghdad Mwanzi News on Tuesday reported U.S. President Joe Biden affirmed that the United States' commitment to Iraq's long-term stability, while praising recent initiatives such as the Baghdad Regional Summit and the historic visit of Pope Francis to Iraq. The White House said in a statement received by Mwanzi News, a copy of which was received, U.S. President Joe Biden met Tuesday with President Barham Sali on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York, noting that they discussed strengthening bilateral relations and deepening corporations and regional diplomatic initiatives. He added, two sides affirmed their respect for democracy in Iraq, the rule of law, and the efforts to hold credible and transparent elections next October. Biden emphasized the United States' is a commitment to Iraq's long-term stability. He praised recent initiatives such as the Baghdad Regional Summit and the historic visit of Pope Francis to Iraq earlier this year as an important symbol of Iraq's contribution to regional stability and interfaith tolerance. And you've been watching Newsroom Weekly Review, your Middle East entertainment news. I'm Chella. I'm here every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you like my content. It's been a pleasure being here this week with you. Thank you all again for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Make sure you join us Fridays, 4 p.m. with Newsroom Updates with Chella Smith Entertainment News. And don't forget us on Sundays for What's Cooking in the Kitchen. You can also find us behind the scenes 24-7 on Snapchat.